Hi there, great to see you. Are you excited to be doing this? Because this is gonna be an exciting session for all of you. It may not be exactly what you think it is, but I'm telling you at the end of this session, you're gonna go <laughs> Okay, what I'm gonna talk about is the importance of customer success. Now, over the past years, the way we've looked at customer success is by first winning more accounts, like as many as we could, at a certain point in time, it would become important that those customers would be successful. But that meant that our first priority is winning accounts and then making those accounts successful. This has led over the years to a maniacal focus of winning more accounts, which is maybe explain some of the reasoning why it's so important to get so many meetings over the years. Meetings, 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 because it led into accounts. However, what we also notice is that there's a very different approach and that approach comes from winning the right accounts and making them successful. What if we first address how to make clients successful? How would we do that? Now, in that road, not only run road A, the red road, the red road leads to first winning more deals, then making them successful. The blue, roots, blue road says the following, win the right accounts, and when you win them, then they will help you win more accounts. Now, that seems to be quite an easier way to do it, isn't it, right? Now, in order to do that, I wanna to talk to you about two most important things that are heavily involved in doing this right. Number one, we're gonna talk about impact, and the second thing we're gonna kind of talk about is critical event. Now, the challenge that we've had over the years is that when we reach out to clients, we reach out because we think they are a fit. I'll give me an explanation what a fit means. A fit means if I'm selling tires, then every car that drives on the road would be a fit. And be selling to all those cars, I would address everybody who owns a car and say, do you want a pair of extra tires? That is what is called a fit. However, as you are in sales development roles, reaching out to those people who are a fit, we find often that they say, no, no, thank you, not interested, and so on. And the, the turnaround rate is significant. In order to switch that, we need to switch from not thinking as helping people who are a fit, but helping those who have a pain. Now, a pain, if I use that same example in using a car, I now be trying to sell to people who have car tires, but for example, who have a ski rack on their, uh, on their car. If I now can feel that the tire is worn on the car and they have a ski rack, then I go like, hmm, they may be going skiing with a tire that has no thread on them. There's a pain somewhere. If I then see that there's a children's seat in the back, then the threat suddenly becomes even more imminent. That is referred to as a pain. I'm selling tires to, the, uh, to in this case, customers. The threat is thin. There's a threat the, the, on, the, on, the, on the tire. That means, hey, something bad could happen. There's a ski rack on the top, meaning they go into an environment of skiing. There's a kid seat in the back. And all this gives me an idea of there's a pain. What we need to seek out in order to outreach to clients, the best way, we need to find those who have a pain. And what we're gonna reach out to them with is the topic called impact. Now, before we start on impact, I want you to know the two topics we're gonna follow now are impact and critical event. And the first part of that is going to be impact. Impact. Now, for years, customers have been buying value. And here's where value comes from. If I sell you a form of routers, for example, infrastructure equipment, I do not get immediately impact out of this. The, those boxes need to be installed, often integrated, shipped to locations, let's say to banking offices, and it may take six to 12 months, sometimes even 18 months, before all those routers are installed. In the old days, in order for me to sell, I had to sell you the value. What will be capable, what will happen once all these routers are operational? The value was really important, and so I created what is called a value proposal. However, today we no longer buy value. And I'll explain to you what the difference is. What, what, when I describe the value is, if you are buying a car to get you to the office, you are buying the value that the car will deliver to you, a trip to the office but you still have to pay road tax, gasoline, you still have to drive the car and so on and so forth. You have to realize that value. Now, that value can be delivered as impact if I buy an Uber ride. I'm not buying the car, I'm not buying the gasoline, I'm simply asking for Uber to get me delivered on the spot at the right time. 
A rideshare delivers you the impact. A car delivers you the value. Today, we live in a world, probably to no surprise, that demands impact. Impact means I give you money and you give me what I want in return. Now, next I'm gonna explain the difference between two kinds of impact, rational impact and emotional impact. Rational impact is measurable in size. For example, I want something faster, I want something more, I want something uh, bigger. These are all indications of volume, of something I can measure. For example, most customers want two kinds of impact. They either want to increase in their revenue stream as a result of the product you offer, or to decrease the cost. These are two very measurable things. Now, measurable means that also that in time it can be measured. So for example, if you save somebody like two hours a week, that equates to eight hours a month, which saves them one working day a month. If I could assume what approximately one day a month, let's say on 20 working days, that is 10%. If on average, every salesperson every month would be closing $50,000, your product on a monthly basis would therefore con you know, by a 10% savings would include a, f a $5,000 increase in revenue times 12 is $60,000 a year per person. Obviously, if we sell into five salesperson, that would mean $300,000 in revenue additionally would be created by saving 10% of an effort. That is a career indication of a rational impact. I could measure it, 10% improvement leads to one day per month, one day per month brings X revenue more. Now what you'll find is that the rational impact is what we communicate the most. We always talk about that. But that is not what is of the most interest to the buyer. Why? Because the buyer has an emotional impact. The emotional impact is what impacts the person on the other side the most. And an emotional impact would relate to something like, I'm currently having a headache getting the reports. It takes me way too much time. I have to get a spreadsheet, manipulate all this, and late on a Sunday, I'm trying to create dashboards for the Monday morning executive meeting. That's giving me a headache and it's costing me time on the weekend. And that is an emotional impact. It impacts me personally. Now, if I go to my boss and I say to, to my boss, hey, I wanna buy this product because the whole Sunday I'm working uh, and this will help me you know, avoid that, many cases corporations don't really care if you spend time on doing that. All they go is like, well, it's not really meaningful. So that person that I sold this emotional impact to, our dashboard will help you a better report, needs to be armed with the rational impact. So me as a buyer, if I hear, you give me great dashboards, I won't tell that to my boss. What I tell to my boss is, hey, I can save $60,000 a month. We can generate you know, X thousand dollars per person a year extra by using the software. I'm selling to them the rational impact while you sold me the emotional impact. This is the reason that both rational impact and emotional impact have a real clear role to play. But you attract me first with emotional impact. Human beings make an emotional decision which they then rationalize with facts and figures. And rational impact impacts the company, any company savings. I, as the decision maker, don't get to pocket that. And emotional impact benefits me personally. It often refers to, you know, on Friday, I save my Friday, it's easier on me. Rational impact, emotional impact. Critical event. Critical event is an event that is so important that there is an action that happens if you don't do it. For example, if a customer would have a certain a need for, for something, let's say they need to have the software in place for the sales kickoff in January. If they don't have that software in place and there's a sales kickoff, there's a consequence associated with it. We often consider this in response to the question, what happens if you miss that date? Well, if you miss the date, something happens. And if the client says, well, nothing would happen, we would just you know, move over, you know, we have another sales kickoff two weeks later, then nothing would happen. Obviously, if a sales kickoff only takes place once a year, it is a clear indicator that there's a consequence associated with not doing that on any given day. And this is a date that we'll be looking for. We'll be searching for this. 
Now, many of you, as a sales development rep or an AE even, you know some of these dates already. You know what product you are selling against what critical event date. So for example, if you sell an applicant tracking system, which is a system that sells towards people who are hiring a lot of folks, January is a big hiring month. And so you want to have the solution in place before you start to submit uh, job descriptions and start receiving all kinds of resumes. You want to have that in place. There's a clear critical event happening. By January, we need 20, 30 people in place. Oh my gosh, we need an applicant tracking system in place by January 1st. For example, another one is where Black Friday, if you're selling you know, during the, the holidays, there's a lot of sales going on. So probably you wanna have a certain software solution that helps you with that in place before Black Friday happens. These, these events are date driven. There's a date set against it. January 1st, uh, October or November 22nd. These are date driven. An event can also be based on truly what an event happens. When we hit 1 million subscribers, you currently are at 890,000 and you're growing about like whatever, 10,000 a week. So over the next 11 weeks, you're gonna hit a million and maybe your software needs something extra or maybe you're launching a new product, date driven. So these are critical events that can either be date-driven or truly an event that happens based on a metric that you achieve that suddenly changes when we get 100 people. A common, very common uh, 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 critical event is, can be a mandate by, a gov by the government when the schools in California by date X all need to be compliant to X, Y, Z. If you sell software against that, then you got a real critical event date. Critical event, why is it so important? It is important because the situation changes over time. You know, previously we looked at you either had budget or you did not have. But budget in SaaS is not as important because in many cases budget is available and by the time they have it, you're too late to ask for it or to apply for it. So what we instead have to think about is, is it a priority? Now, critical event is an indication of priority. It tells me whether it's a nice to have or I really, really need to have it. Now, I want you to think of priority as something that changes over time. It fluctuates. In the beginning, the priority may be, hey, I'm just looking at a demo. But for example, if I'm looking for an applicant tracking system, which is a solution to help me hire people, maybe three months before I need it, it's, hey, the priority is low. Two months before I need it, hey, it's nice to have. Right when I need it, because I'm hiring, it is a must have. But then if I don't have it in place yet and I see the headaches that are coming onto me and now I'm doing it manually, then a month after I needed it, I go like, my gosh, I wish I had it. Now, what we see is that there's another moment. If I then once again need it later on, now in number moment number five, it's when I'm essentially become an educated person. I know and I can recall the pain of what it was to not have this. These are five different moments. And in this moment, the priority changes all the time. I may have budget the entire time, but the budget only is an indication of one thing. The dimension that I'm looking for down here, is it a priority? Now, a great way to determine if something is a priority is to ask, have you been involved with a similar decision like this? And if they say yes, then you can ask, you know, based on what you're currently knowing, is this equal or less important than X, Y, Z? It's an asking of a priority. For example, if they've been previously involved in hiring, and they say, yes, I was previously involved with hiring. Well, what were the pains that you didn't have it? That is a way more indication of an educated buyer than if the buyer actually, no, I'm just looking for it the first time. Um, this is the first applicant tracking system that I'm ever buying. That's clearly a different sense of priority. Okay, that indicates that priority is a function of time and you need to know that. This leads us that we now, as a next step, we need to know certain things to go into our job as a sales development rep and an AE, we need to know a few things and that I will be talking about next. It's the five things you need to know. So I just spoken about a few topics. I started off with what really is the difference between impact and value and how today we are in an impact driven culture. Based on that, I indicated there are two kinds of impact. Rational impact, I can measure it, you know, size and rational impact was often decreased cost increase revenue and emotional impact. Help me make a better life. 
better dashboards, easier, fewer clicks, and so on. These are things that are, re those impact, rational impact and emotional impact are differentiated as follows. I first make an emotional decision, which I then rationalize with facts and figures. Next, what we now determine is that in order to do that, I also have what we call a critical event. When do I want this impact by? We refer to that as a critical event. It's a date that is set or an event that is achieved. A date that is set, what happens if you miss that date, or an event that is achieved. When I hit 1 million subscribers. When we look at these two things, then we realize that both the date and event and the size-wise are based as a function of time, a priority. And so that priority supersedes in importance the budget, because budget is always the same, but your application to that budget may vary over time. Now what I want you to understand is that one first thing, impact is directly related to critical event. They are locked to each other. If I need the impact, I need it by a certain date. And if I tell you I need, I need this by date X, uh, and now you ask what happens if you miss that date, guess what? Boop, arrow back. I'm going to get an arrow that points back to impact. They are connected. Impact and critical event are connected. Now, what I want you to do next is I want you to understand that as an SDR and an AE, you need to have five of each. You need to know what, what are the five critical events that drive my business, that the customer makes a decision on. What are the five? Oh, by January, they generally have a lot of hiring and so on and so forth. Five critical events you need to identify. Next, what you need to identify is five rational impacts. What are the five impacts that are product delivers? And what are the five emotional impacts that are product delivers? Often, what you get is you get from your management, from your marketing and management department, you get something that's called a value proposal. These are the four or five value proposals that we address. And each value proposal needs to be dissected in what is the critical event that they sell against, what are some of the rational impacts, and some of the emotional impacts. When you combine all that, now you are ready to actually create a proper outbound sales pitch, outbound email campaign, because we're gonna, you're gonna create these based on the impact and critical event. Are you ready for that? Okay, how do you get started? What can you do right now? I want you to do the following. I want you to prepare a five-step sheet. I want you to, you know, if you have a five or 10-step uh, outreach sequence, I want you to think about that sequence, okay? Say like, hey, I'm gonna do like, let's say 10, 10 taps. I'm gonna touch the, the customer 10 times. And then under each step, I want you to think slowly, first on the left, emotional, and on the right, rational. And then I want you to write which are the content you're gonna address, which impact and which critical event. In this, you need to prepare five points for each. I need you to prepare five critical events that you sell against. Ask people in your company, what are the critical events we sell against? And I need you to have five of them. I need you to have five rational impacts. We save, we increase, we decrease, we do X, Y, Z. Five, and I want you to have five emotional impacts, okay? Three times five. If you have, hey, I know these are critical events, this is the rational impact, this is the emotional impact, then I can codify that into my sequence left to right. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use content to make that message. Visual content, very used very early on, a lot of visual content, and towards the end, a lot of rational contact, spreadsheets and calculators. And so now we're gonna create a journey from left to right, from first email to 10th email, from first touch point to 10th touch point. With that, I can now properly create and create myself a proper outreach sequence that I can use, measure, and approve upon. And with that, I've hoping to give you a story about why customers are buying, impact, when they are buying, against the critical event and how it changes, and how you can codify an outreach sequence in five steps, five to 10 emails to, to deliver that message to them. And I hope it will be very helpful to you and that today's day has been a great day for you. With that said, I want to wish you a happy, happy day.